opinion the best flanger pedal ever made the most outrageous cool flanger pedal of all time Ibanez FL305 hey friends fellow rock and roll enthusiasts little Tommy homeschooling remember me mm. hey I just wanted to check in and say hello to everybody and uh, all that shit. Here, let me plug this back in real quick. Because I might show you something. Here, I'll just use a short cord. Man, what a crazy uh, week. We started yesterday. We started uh, these amazing uh, rehearsal slash sessions with Ann Wilson at uh, Paul Moak Studio with Smokestack. And I'll tell you, man. We had so much fun. We spent all day yesterday working on this song that we, uh, a little a little riff that I came up with when I was on my deathbed, uh, having that terrible illness. Uh, after a week of not playing guitar, I went out on the back porch and tried to get some sunshine, you know, to heal my body. And uh, I picked up an acoustic and I was so weak I could barely play it. And uh, I just started playing this little riff and uh, I don't know, I was like delusional, like some sort of crazy different world I was in. And I recorded it and sent it to Ann and she loved it immediately. She was like, that's amazing. That's a, I already have that vocal ideas for that. That's, cause that's how we've been writing. You know, we, we all just come up with riffs and then she puts words to it. And then, uh, so yesterday we started goofing with that idea and uh, man, we came up with this amazing track and uh, she reminded us all who Ann Wilson was when she started singing in there. It was fucking amazing. You know, I said this many times and I'll say it again. Collaboration is the best part of music. I've always said, when you get yourself in a group of people that are all like-minded and all are, you know, creative geniuses, and you start throwing out ideas and people start improving on everybody else's idea and, uh, and just the brainstorming and the sort of group collective problem solving is my favorite thing 
in all of music. There's no achievement that one man can make by himself that's as great as uh, a group collaboration. I've said this many times and I really believe this. It's, uh, it's my favorite thing in music. You know, there are a few people in history that have been able to lock themselves in a room and do everything by themselves, and it turns out great. Uh, Prince, Paul McCartney, um, Todd Rundgren, you know, people like that. But um, for mortals like myself, I need other people around, you know, to get ideas across. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> when you got a, a group of people, it's like a giant filter, okay? An idea idea gets thrown out and it goes through five or six people's filters and you know everyone's got their own sort of things that, that they're looking out for that they're not going to let happen on the record you know so like if I have a tendency to get a little too artistic um, like I'll indulge because you know my prog rock roots and everything and I'll get a little too artistic and I'll throw out you know and then you got guys like you know Paul Moak in the band who's who's also extremely artistic from a totally different angle. He's more of a rock and roll kind of guy. Like, and he'll look at me and go, dude, uh, no, you know. Uh, and, and I'm like, yeah, of course, sorry, man. That was a little too, uh, you know. But by the time it makes it through everybody's filters and, you know, including Anne as well, you know, the ideas are usually pretty strong by the time they pass inspection by that group of people, right? And I'm sure that's how all great bands functioned, you know, um, you know, they all make up for each other's weaknesses. If one person does too much of this, the other people will be like, nah, dude, you know, you know, you got to balance it out somehow. This is all pretty simple shit, and I'm sure you guys already know all this, but I'm just reinforcing the fact that that's how music works. And, um, you know, when I'm in the studio, when I'm making a record, when I'm writing a song or whatever I'm doing, producing an artist, I just like to have people around who are creative, I don't care what instrument they play. Most of the people that I find that are extremely creative play every instrument. And they they just, they don't think of music in terms of like, I'm a guitar player or I'm a piano player. They think of music like producers and like creators. And they happen to play this, this instrument or that instrument, but you know, they listen to the thing with a big picture in mind, not just like the instrument that they're playing. So, if you get a, group, a room full of those kind of guys, you know, um, omni sort of creative people that that can play anything, or, or and and then you get you get all of those ideas flowing. That's when shit gets really crazy, you know. Um, you ever heard of this band called the Beatles? That's kind of how they were. Uh, this guitar I'm playing is a something. What is it? Fifty seven Les Paul Special, and. You know, Uncle Larry has bragged before, but this bridge that he helped design is probably the only thing I've ever done in this life that's that has left the world in better condition than it was when I first got here. Uh, that and I think my two biggest contributions to this world was that I was the guy who begged the Musicians Union in Nashville to put a nighttime Dropbox for the time cards. See, back when I was a young, single lone wolf in my 30s, working seven days a week, when you do a session, you fill out a yellow union time card, right? And I could never get to the union to drop off the time card in any time when they were open, because I was always working so much. So I said, guys, put a little box outside the union where you can put the time cards in. That was my idea, okay? And it still exists, so it's been up there for 20 years, and that was Uncle Larry's doing. I'm just saying, you know, for all you young bucks out there, when you put a time card in the old night, nighttime drop box there, guess who came up with that? Okay, uh, enough bragging. Um, here's why I brought this bridge up, okay? This bridge, the Music City Stud Finder is amazing. And it, it, you could take any 54 through 60 Les Paul, that was, that was built with the studs in the wrong place. They all were. And you can correct it with that bridge. It makes up for all the problems, you know. So then, you know, there's other bridges that the Music, bridge, Music City Bridge makes, right? Joe Glazer and Nick Druschel and those guys. Josh Rawlings. They, 
they've got several products. Here's a new product they came out with called the Savvy. And this is a bridge that works for 61 and onward Gibsons, okay? And these these are amazing. Uh, all this stuff that this company makes is 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 incredible and it all works and it's and it's designed by real guys that are in the trenches that are trying to solve real problems and real players, okay? Uh, this morning, unrelated, I was uh, geeking out on some Randy Newman, uh, playing uh, you know a couple tunes for my kids on the way to school. I'm not a huge Randy Newman fan, but I've always respected the guy greatly. You know, um, I don't know all the album cuts and stuff like that, but you know, I know the hits and I know the important stuff that he did, and I have great respect for him. And uh, I think he's a pretty funny cat. You know, anybody that writes a song called. I don't want those short people around here. It's pretty, pretty edgy, you know? But dig this, man. You guys remember this old song called I Love L.A., right? It's got many different movements that it goes through. Very um, sort of forward-thinking musical ideas mixed in with some real silly sort of 50s doo-wop. It makes a pretty interesting stew. And about, and about three minutes into the tune, it goes off under the solo bit. I think it's in the key of C. Dig these chords, okay? Because you know how I love cards. Here it comes. Five chord. Amazing. That just appeals to me on so many levels. First of all, the John Carpenter synth sounds. Um, that reminds me of all the Genesis shit that I grew up on uh, using polychords. Okay, it's it's a simple thing, but it creates such tension. Now, you dig this. Okay, you got C major, and then A flat major over C. And then B flat major over C, and then G major over C. So you got the chords are. All pedaling over C, so they. Simple major chords, all being imposed over the, the C, creates this amazing tension. You know, Tony Banks in Genesis was the all-time king of holding a bass note and moving triads around on top of that single static bass note to create incredible tensions. Uh, the absolute king, all time. I mean, nobody could touch him when it came to that stuff. Um, Classical training, classical roots, these things were very popular in sort of classical music, you know. And Tony used all that in his writing in Genesis. Oh, man, I could give you a million examples, but I'll spare you. But there you go. So this little riff that I was playing, uh, this thing, which is, you know, in, in the key of C, I was, just, I was using my, my love of fourths, parallel sliding fourths, to create... Uh, interesting rubs, like in the key of C. So that you would think of that more like in the key of E, but... But when you put, impose it over C, it becomes very cool. And then you do the same thing up a fourth in F. Twisty chords, right? Go. 
B flat. A minor seven. D seven over A. Time. Have a great day. Uncle Larry.